On today's show, Fiat Chrysler merges with Peugeot Citroen to become the world's fourth largest automaker. America's largest privately owned coal mining company files for bankruptcy. And Volkswagen's boss says Tesla isn't in financial trouble and isn't a niche market automaker anymore. It's a company that Volkswagen has a lot of respect for. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi folks, welcome to another roundup in the world of clean cars and energy. I have so much to share with you today, so let's get right on with it. In a move that caught many of us in the auto industry unawares, Fiat Chrysler announced midweek that it will be merging with French automaker PSA in a move that will make the resulting mega automaker the fourth largest car company in the world. The merger will see PSA and FCA continue to work independently on their own electric vehicle products, but I think the basis of this merger will allow FCA to continue to produce gas-guzzling SUVs, muscle cars and pickup trucks, leveraging the fuel economy credits of the PSA family. I made an in-depth video on the merger this week, so be sure to check it out later. If it makes it into production, the European-built Lightyear One five-seat sedan will not only be one of the few cars on sale to harvest sunlight to supplement the car's electricity from its onboard battery pack, but it will also be the most aerodynamic too. Tests published this week show that the Lightyear One managed to achieve an incredible coefficient of drag of just 0.2 in the wind tunnel. This, the company claims, is a record. But I should note that both the GM EV1 and Volkswagen XL1, while no longer available, both had drag coefficients of 0.19. Still, 0.2 is very impressive. Mercedes-Benz has issued a recall on some of its brand new 2019 EQC electric SUVs. The reason? A bolt used on the front axle differential transmission in some cars may not meet, quote, durability specifications. That's usually code for someone using an incorrectly rated bolt on the production line and, says parent company Daimler, could result in a broken bolt getting lodged in the transmission. This, in turn, could cause a potential vehicle stall. Daimler did not say how many vehicles were affected, but one industry magazine has estimated around 1,700 vehicles will need to be recalled. It's no secret that digging coal out of the ground and using it to generate electricity is not only worse for the planet than using renewable energy generation methods, but now more expensive too. And this week, Murray Energy, the largest privately owned coal company in the United States, filed for bankruptcy protection. At the moment, the company, which I should note is owned by a major donor to the Republican Party, is seeking to restructure. But it is the eighth coal company in the US this year to run out of money. While I'm glad to see coal die a quick death, I really hope that those who are currently working for the company get a chance to retrain in cleaner, greener energy jobs. For a long time, industry analysts and some Tesla fans have called Tesla a small niche company. But in response to a question from a reporter at a recent event, Volkswagen's CEO, Herbert Diaz, stated that Volkswagen takes Tesla very, very seriously indeed. Quote, Tesla is not niche, he said. Quote, the Model 3 is a large series model and they are one of the biggest manufacturers of electric car batteries. We have a lot of respect for Tesla. It's quite a change to hear this from days of old where previous Volkswagen bosses not only scoffed, but criticized Tesla's achievements. It also shows how seriously Volkswagen is finally taking EVs. The UK city of Bristol is well known for many things. The first female doctor, laughing gas, and of course, David Prose, aka Darth Vader. But it's now going to be famous for something else entirely, becoming the first UK city to ban diesel-engined vehicles. 
Set to take place in 2021, the ban will completely remove all diesel engine vehicles from Bristol city centre. As someone who used to live there, it's where the show originated and, by the way, is where Fully Charged is also based. Yay, Bristol! Last week, just as we were preparing this show, Tesla revealed the third generation of its solar roof photovoltaic solar panel products. Unlike traditional photovoltaic solar panels, which sit on top of a roof structure, Tesla's solar roof tiles are actually the roof. When used to replace an existing roof structure, Tesla says they are cheaper than replacing the roof with standard shingle and then adding solar panels on top. But how cost-effective it proves for you really does boil down to your personal situation, plus how likely it is that you're going to be able to take advantage of full tax credits for photovoltaic solar panel installations. There's a video coming on this topic next week. Continuing its drive towards fully autonomous, hands-off robotic taxis, Waymo has begun offering limited rider-only trips in Phoenix, Arizona. This isn't a fully public service yet. You will have to apply and be selected to make use of the service, as well as sign a non-disclosure agreement. But the fully robotic taxi service gets Waymo one step closer to running a fully autonomous, human-free taxi service across the US. In addition to the new program, Waymo says it's now testing fully autonomous trucks using that same autonomous driving software and hardware in collaboration with Peterbilt Trucks. Trucks will be driven in Michigan, Arizona and Georgia. Trees are important. Not only do they look beautiful, but they also help clean the air we breathe. But with global deforestation at shockingly high levels, many organisations are now working on concerted efforts to plant new trees around the world where they're needed. One such effort is in the form of Team Trees, which this week got a one million tree or one million dollar donation from Elon Musk. Team Trees has set itself a goal of planting 20 million trees by January 1st, 2020. And we've personally just donated 100 trees to the program. And from now on, when the team on this channel has to fly somewhere, we'll be digging deep and helping Team Trees plant even more. The world's oceans are in quite a state. Thanks to our addiction to plastic and our inability to properly recycle the stuff, and it's led many organisations to try and clean up around the world. This week, we saw the latest in the form of the Ocean Cleanup Project, which has announced it will put interceptor vessels at the mouths of 1,000 of the world's most polluting rivers. Each interceptor vessel is fully solar powered and has onboard batteries so it can operate around the clock. Its goal? To scoop up debris from river and stopping them from polluting the oceans before they get there. It's certainly a new type of electric vehicle that I don't think we've ever covered on this channel before. And finally, the Aerial Atom is a lightweight, road-legal sports car that's frankly more go-kart than anything else. And it's traditionally powered by a gasoline engine, as is its crazy off-road cousin, the Aerial Nomad. But tier one parts supplier Borg Warner has just taken a bog-standard Aerial Nomad and fitted it with its own electric drivetrain and battery pack in order to demonstrate its newest offerings in the EV space. The result? Well, it's an off-road, go-anywhere racer that looks absolutely stunning, goes like stink, and is 100% green. There's nothing more I can say right now. I mean, it was my 40th birthday party. There's nothing more I can say. I mean, it was my 40th yesterday, so how about it, Borg Warner? No? Oh well. And on that fantastic story, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got feedback, please do send it our way. Make sure as well that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified 100% renewable electricity company. It's easy to make the change and you'll be helping New Zealand towards a cleaner, greener, zero emission future if you make the switch. I'll be back soon with a new episode. But